Okay, so I'll just quickly uh, breeze through stuff that we had done in the last class. Uh, we discussed initially about what is an information system. In fact, we took the title of the course, Enterprise Wide Accounting Information Systems. We picked it out word by word, and then we discussed why uh, we are studying this and all of that stuff. Right? And then we started looking at entity relationship diagrams. We looked at the notion of what an entity is. And this is just by way of review. Uh, so we looked at that, and then we looked at the notion of a relationship. And we discussed the fact that uh, in an entity relationship diagram, sorry, let me. the fact that an entity relationship diagram really uh, talks about the business rules that control entities in an organization. Although it doesn't mention specific entity instances, the ER diagram is really talking about the rules that apply to all instances, the business rules. Right? So we saw this example, we saw this diagram, and then we looked at an example of, you know, that's the entity relationship diagram, these are the instances at the bottom. Right? And, you know, uh, the instance diagram is telling you specifically which instance is connected to which instance here. That diagram is simply saying at a general level customers may be connected to sales orders. We looked at that, uh, then we looked at some examples, then we looked at the notion of attributes of an entity type, okay, and then we looked at the fact that some attributes may be required attributes indicated with an asterisk, or they may be optional attributes indicated with an O. So we looked at that notation, uh, and by the way, one thing I did not talk about in the last class, which is probably important and you understand it implicitly, is the fact that when you say an entity type has attributes, what we're really saying is that every instance of the entity type can have those attributes. Right? So once again, it's a statement about the rules that govern instances. Right? It's a statement about the rules that govern instances, but we're not talking about any specific instance. We, here we are saying a customer, every customer in our system must have a name, may have an address, may have a phone number, etc. Okay, so that's really what we are saying and we understand that implicitly. I gave you an example here of uh, required and optional attributes. So if you look at the table at the bottom here, you see that the required attributes, all of the rows have values for the required attributes, whereas some of the rows are missing values for the optional attributes just to make the concept clear of required and optional attributes. Then we started talking about the notion of relationship cardinality, which is really talking about the questions of how many of each entity, how many instances of each entity type can or must participate in a relationship. Right? And of course, you know that there can be an upper limit which says how many of the other entity type must be connected to, the, oh, sorry, can be connected to this entity type? At the most, how many? That's the upper limit. So in this example, we are saying, at most, how many sales orders can a customer have? Right? And we discuss the fact that, well, uh, most of the time, a customer could be allowed to have many, many sales orders. There is practically no limit on how many sales orders a customer is allowed to have. So that's the upper limit. Now, the upper limit may be many which is the case in the present example, or it could be one. Right? The upper limit cannot be zero. Any idea why that is the case? Why is it that the upper limit cannot be zero? The relationship wouldn't be there. Then the relationship wouldn't exist. Right? So there's no point in talking about cardinality of a non-existent relationship. Right? If the upper limit is zero, it's saying customer can have no sales orders. In other words, there's no connection between customer and sales order. So why are we talking about it? So that is why the upper limit has to be at least one, but it could be many. And we're not interested in further fine de uh, descriptions of this. We, we don't want to say a customer is allowed to have at most five sales orders. We're not interested. It's either one or it's many. That's all we are concerned about for this example, for this notation. And then, of course, we talk about the lower limit, which says, okay, customers can have sales orders, but is it possible that I can have a customer who doesn't have a sales order? Is it possible or not, right? So in this example, that depends on the business rule. Some organizations may say no. You know, in order to be treated as a customer, they must have had at least one sales order. Some organizations may say it doesn't matter. I'm still willing to keep them as a customer, even though they have not yet placed an order. Okay, that's a matter of business rule. And of course, the lower limit has to be zero or one. 
Okay, so we can uh, technically we can say well there must be at least two or at least three or something like that. There could be such a rule, but in this notation and in database design, they found that that's not necessary to really account for the lower limit is either zero or one, and that's adequate. Okay, so that notation we talked about. Uh, and then, of course, we went on and looked at the actual notation itself. I'm just skipping forward here, right? And we saw that uh, the lower limit is indicated on the side of the entity which we are talking about. In other words, the lower limit for customer in this relationship is going to be shown on the line to closer to the customer, right? So you've got a line which is connecting two entities in a relationship. So there's the half of the line which is closer to the entity and the other half of the line which is closer to the other entity, right? So the lower limit is shown on the line closer to the entity of interest, right? So in this case, the dashed line is what is indicating the lower limit for customer, right? And what does the dashed line mean? Yeah. Zero. The dashed line says it is possible that a customer may have zero sales orders, right? And a solid line would say, no, a customer must have at least one sales order. Right? So dashed or solid is what is telling us the lower limit, right? And the upper limit we are now putting on the opposite entity, right? So the lower limit and upper limit are actually occurring at different places, and that's the slight difference in notation between what you had last semester and this semester. So the upper limit is being now put on the opposite entity, and the upper limit could be one or many, right? And if it's one, what would be the notation? If the upper limit is 1, what would be the notation? Straight line. Nothing. Basically nothing, right? Because anyway, there's a relationship, there's a line out there, right? So the fa if there's nothing indicating indicated there, that means the upper limit is 1. And if the upper limit is many, then you see the crow foot, like you're seeing here, okay? So that's what the notation is. We looked at this. Uh, then we looked at reading the relationship from the opposite side. Right, in the sense that up to now we were reading the relationship from the customer side, meaning what are the cardinalities for customer? What is the lower limit? What is the upper limit? But of course, the diagram is complete, it has the cardinalities for sales order also, right? And we looked at this, and uh, what are the answers we got for this in the last class? What is the uh, you know, what is the lower limit for sales order? One. Right? We, we discussed and said, well, a sales order must be for at least one customer. You can't have a sales order just sitting out there without a customer. Right? In other words, from a practical point of view, you would say, I cannot even enter a sales order into the system unless I know who, this, who the customer is for that sales order. Right? So that's the lower limit for sales order. An upper limit for sales order basically is saying, given a sales order, how many customers can be associated with that sales order, right? And what was the upper limit we came up with in the last class? That was also one, right? As Timothy points out, that was also one, which basically says a sales order has to be for one and only one customer. Lower limit is one, upper limit is one, right? And in this diagram, where are we indicating that the lower limit is one? near sales order, and which notation is indicating that? Solid the solid line, right? So the solid line near sales order, that is what is talking about the upper limit. And because it's a solid line, we are, I'm sorry, that's what's talking about the lower limit. And because it's a solid line, we're saying the lower limit is one, which means every sales order must be connected to at least one customer, right? So far, when you're talking about lower limit, you're saying at least. And where are we indicating the upper limit? on the customer and the upper limit is one because no because there is no crow foot right upper limit is crow foot or no crow foot lower limit is dash or solid okay so the upper limit because there is no crow foot we say well the upper limit has to be one because the upper limit can be one or many it's one if there is no crow foot it's many if there is a crow foot there is no crow foot so it's one so this is what says that both of these are one. Okay, I think this is a point we had reached in the lecture last class. Yeah. No, the dotted line near an entity only indicates the lower limit for that entity. 
right? So the dashed line out there has nothing at all to do with sales order, with sales order's cardinality. Okay, it has only everything to do with the customer's cardinality. Yeah. So let's say the upper limit had been uh, many. Mm -hmm. It would be a dashed line with the folks that aren't. Yes, yes, absolutely. Right, so it's a good point that uh, he brings up, which he's saying, well, suppose a sales order could be for many customers. We know it doesn't make sense, but suppose. Right, then it would, there would be a dashed line. The dashed line because a customer may or may not have a sales order. That has nothing to do with the cardinality of sales order. But if a sales order could be for many customers, then there would be a crow food out there and there would still be the dash line. That's possible. And we'll see diagrams later on which have that kind of characteristic. Okay, so this is the point we had reached uh, in the last class. Now let's go forward and I'm hoping to finish off the whole uh, discussion of you know notation and ER diagramming today. I hope I'm able to finish that. Uh, now this lecture, is on Blackboard, uh, but the lecture will become active only at the end of the class. Okay, the reason is that you know I want you to listen to the class rather, rather than be distracted by looking at the lecture online, uh, because there's not too much going on in every, like in every slide, right? So it's easily easy for you to just take a glance at the slide and then listen to what's going on. You know, if there's a lot of stuff to read, then you may want uh, access to it on your computer, right? That's why. As soon as the class finishes, you'll see that on Blackboard you're able to look at the lecture. Right, and again, I have converted the lecture so that the background is black in case you need to print it. Uh, you know, it's uh, lighter on the toner to print it with a white background rather than a black background. So I have given it to you with a white background. I'm sorry. Okay. So now, when you look at one to many relationships, again, this is stuff I think those who have done Enterprise One, you know this. Just want to establish the ground here. Right. So you've got one to many relationship here same relationship that we spoke about earlier which is customer placing sales orders right now we know that relationships are represented only through data values right and that's a property of what the fact that relationships are represented only through data values that's the property of relational databases right because we are talking about relational databases so that's just how relational databases are designed so we know that Right, and we also know that sales orders are placed by exactly one customer. Right, because the lower limit is one, upper limit is one. So sales orders are placed by exactly one customer. Right, and therefore, the, on the diagram we can draw a line and indicate the fact that a sales order is placed by one customer. Right, but ultimately in the database, because it's a relational database, the only way the relationship can be represented is by putting a data value, right? And therefore, the way it's going to be represented in the database is because a sales order can have only one customer, the easiest way of representing that is to take the customer's ID and put it in the sales order, right? This is just like what we saw in the very first uh, schema that I showed. In fact, let me just quickly jump back to it. So if you look at this diagram, right, we know that a shipment can be made by only one supplier. Right? That's, that's what is implied in this diagram, that if I have a shipment, that shipment could have originated from only one supplier. You know, multiple suppliers couldn't have joined together to make one shipment, at least in this diagram. right? And how are we indicating who the supplier is for a particular shipment? By putting the supplier number. Is nothing but the supplier number is nothing but the primary key of the supplier table. Right? So the supplier number is what is telling us what is the connection between a shipment and a supplier. Right? So that's exactly what we are now trying to say in this diagram. That a sales order is placed by exactly one customer, and the way we are going to indicate that is by putting the customer's ID inside sales order. Okay? That's really what we are saying. We are saying that if there's a one-to-many relationship, we know that a sales order can be placed by only one customer. And therefore, if you take a sales order, the way we are going to say who is the customer is simply by putting the ID of the customer inside sales order.
And that's sufficient because the sales order can be placed by only one customer. Just put the ID of the customer. It's done. Okay. So that is why the customer ID is implicitly an attribute inside sales order. Okay. That's implicit because in any one-to-many relationship, right, you know that the entity on the many side can be connected with at most one occurrence on the one side, right? Because a sales order can have only one customer. It's a one-to-many relationship, right? It's a one on the customer side, many on the sales order side. So you know that a sales order can have only one customer. And the easiest way to represent that is to take the customer's ID, put it into sales order. Right? So every sales order will have a slot for a customer ID. You can put whoever the customer is for the sales order inside that slot. Okay. Now the reason I say this is implicit is because you always have to represent it this way. And because it's implicit, we don't even show it on the ER diagram. Right? We don't show it on the ER diagram, but it's there. It's implicit. The customer ID is an attribute on sales order that is accepted implicitly. Why is it that we might not show it on the ER diagram? What's the harm in showing it? What's, what might be the harm in actually showing, okay, I just put customer ID inside the sales order box. What's the big deal? Why are we not putting it there? Redundancy, exactly. It's redundant because it's already implied by the one-to-many relationship. You put it there. You're being redundant and you're adding clutter to the diagram, right? Now, this is a simple diagram. Putting it there or not putting it there is not a big deal, right? But in a complicated diagram, you may have one entity which is connected to many other entities. And you put all of those five foreign keys in this entity, the diagram simply becomes highly cluttered, right? So again, the notation is trying to be uh, you know, very clear in terms of saying only what needs to be said, nothing more, OK? That is why. So now we ask the question, how many attributes does customer have as of this diagram? Two. Customer has two attributes, customer ID, customer name. How many attributes does sales order have? Three. There is an implicit attribute. Okay, It has two, which you can explicitly see, order ID and order date. The third attribute is? Customer ID. Okay, that's there. Even though it's not shown, it's there implicitly. Okay, so the correct answer to the question how many attributes does sales order have in this diagram? Three attributes. Okay, so I just want to point that out. It's implicit. Let me do one thing. Let me just put that shade down. So that just want to point that out to you. Okay, so this is what we had just said. So if you looked at the actual tables, you know, if, because after all the ER diagram translates into a relational database table, if you looked at the tables, then the sales order table would have this field customer ID, but we just don't show it in the diagram. Okay, just make sure that it's implicit, we are avoiding clutter and all of that stuff. Now, when we look at diagrams, they'll have these characteristics. So I just want to make sure that you look at it and you, you know, sort of mentally start seeing that attribute there, even though it doesn't exist. Okay, so we've, this is not a mystery anymore. We've discussed this. Okay, it has three attributes because customer ID is an implicit attribute. Okay, so this is a general rule for one-to-many relationships. We showed it as an example for the customer and sales order scenario. But in any one-to-many relationship, the primary key of the entity on the one side, in this case, the one side happens to be the customer side, right? Because this one many. The crow foot is where the many is. The plain line is where the one is. The absence of crow foot is where the one is, right? So uh, the, the primary key of the entity type on the one side is implicitly an attribute of the entity on the many side. Okay, so it's sort of as if we took the customer ID here and also added it out here.
This is the general rule that applies to all one-to-many relationships. Okay, now a question. Now for every attribute, we spoke about this concept of whether it's a required attribute or is an optional attribute, right? So now customer ID is going to be an attribute on the sales order, right? We know that by, by virtue of this rule. Is it a required attribute or an alter, uh, optional attribute there? Required why? Oh no, it's called a foreign key. Ah, yeah, foreign, key. foreign key. Right, it's a foreign key, but why is why is it required? Why, why could I not have it optional? Uh, because without, I think without that uh, attribute, there would be no link to the sales order. Right? Yeah, okay, that's you're there, but not exactly. Any other viewpoint on this? Why is it a required attribute? Suppose I said it's optional. Okay, suppose I said that customer ID is optional. Okay, I'm just jumping back here. Suppose I said customer ID is optional, right? Then what is the consequence of that? Maybe this row doesn't have a customer ID, right? Option, yeah. And you don't know who the order is going to? Right, that's because the lower limit for sales order is one. Every sales order must be for a customer, right? Do you get that? That every sales order has to be for a customer and then like Jessica says, if you leave this blank, then you've got a sales order, you don't know who the customer is. That's not acceptable, right? So that's the, that's the point. I think you had it in your mind, but you just didn't state it uh, in that turn, right? So the point is, if the line by the side of this entity is solid, right, then it says that Every sales order must be for a customer and must be for at least one customer as well. One and only one customer. So now you have to represent it. And the way you're representing is by putting the customer ID and you have to have a customer. So the customer ID cannot be blank. That is why it becomes a required attribute. Right? If for whatever reason that line had been a dashed line, in this case, it doesn't make sense because that would say a sales order may be for no customer. If that were the case, then it would be a foreign key still, but it would not be a required attribute, right? So because that would then allow you to say, well, I've got a sales order. I don't know the, who the customer is, you know, but my system allows me to create that sales order. So I'll put the sales order, I'll leave the customer blank. So it's an optional attribute in that case, right? So whether the line is solid or dashed is what determines whether that foreign key that you're putting in there is required or optional, right? If it's solid, it's a required attribute. If it's dashed, it becomes an optional attribute, okay? Just, just pointing that out here. Okay, uh, Okay. I, we must have done this in the last class, right? So I'm saying uh, have some ER diagram. Maybe we can do it right now. Uh, tell me about some entity relationship diagram and then let's discuss the cardinalities, okay? So what I'm going to do now is open up some place where I can write here. Okay, shoot, any, give me two entities that are connected. I'll just draw it as we go along. Anyone? teacher class okay so we're going to have an entity called teacher and class okay this clearly a connection okay uh, so what kind of uh, connection relationship is this a teacher can have how many classes a teacher may have many classes and at least at least one, that's what we want to say, okay. Okay, so if it's at least one, then what would, how would I indicate that? A solid line. And many, I would indicate that by crow foot. Okay. So that's what got filled up when you're talking about teacher. Right, lower limit is one, solid line. Upper limit is many, crow foot. Okay, now from a class point of view, 
A class may have how many teachers? A class must have how many teachers at least? One. One. So, so what is the consequence of the lower limit? Solid. Solid. And how many teachers? A class may have at most how many teachers? Let's say one. It could be many. You know, it could be team taught and so on. But let's say it's one in this example. So then, no crow food. Okay. That's it. If it's many, you put crow food there also. No, 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 no. Because you know crow food will go on the opposite entity. So if it were many, then the crow food would go there. Okay, but in this case we said it's one, so there won't be a growth. Okay, so this is it. There's no notation in the middle. Notations are, uh, you know, the line is dashed and there's a crow foot on the opposite side, or the line is solid and there's no crow foot above it. Okay. Okay, so that's just uh, an example of discussing about cardinalities. Okay, so we did this.